so you want to be a hacker. There are a lot of preconceived notions about hacking in the realm of cybersecurity that I hope to clear up by introducing you to the tools necessary to becoming a hacker. We're going to cover, cover a couple reasons why you might be interested in becoming a hacker, though we'll expand a bit more on this toward the end of our talk. I'll introduce the different types of hackers out there. I'm going to give you the basic steps to being a hacker and take some time to practice being one. And finally, I'll talk about the importance of hackers in the field of cybersecurity. You might be wondering, why should I be a hacker? Well, most people are unaware of the bug bounty programs that many big name companies have adopted within the last few years. Facebook recently paid a 10-year-old Finnish kid $10,000 for exposing a flaw in Instagram. Microsoft has bounties that range from a few thousand to about 100,000 for identifying problems with their services. Apple recently hopped on board just a few weeks ago with bounties as high as $200,000. But I hope money isn't your only reason for becoming a hacker. Yes. Attaining computer hacking skills gives you access to the most elite levels of social status. <laughs> That's not all, but in order to talk more about other reasons why you should become a hacker, it, we need to first understand what hackers are and to understand distinctions within the hacker community. Yes, you heard me right. These underground computer nerds are not just working from their parents' basements. There is an actual community of hackers, and they place themselves into these following categories. White hat hackers are the good guys of the industry, also known as ethical hackers. With the permission of the developer, they administer penetration tests to find security vulnerabilities and report back to the developer with their findings. Believe it or not, these hackers are usually certified ethical hackers by the EC Council. These are the guys that usually collect the bug bounties. On the opposite end of the spectrum are black hat hackers, the bad guys, and also known as crackers. They hack either for personal profit at the expense of others or for the purpose, or for the purpose of directly attacking others. These are the guys stealing your credit card information from Target, and they're also the guys that get most of the attention in the media. Gray hat hackers are what I call digital Robin Hoods. They may do unethical things for the good of others. Gray hats also default to the philosophy of it's better to ask for permission than or ask for it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. An example of a gray hat hacker is one that doesn't ask for permission to compromise a computer system, but will still uh, inform the developer of any vulnerabilities after finding it. So now that you know what kind of hacker you want to be, let's start with the basics of how to become one. Step one, attain basic computer knowledge. Check. Good job. <laughs> Step two, become a code master. Good job. <laughs> You've done a good job learning JavaScript. Some other beneficial languages to learn are HTML, Python, and C. Step three, choose your operating system. Linux has been popular for a while, but with the rise of Macs, Unix is now more so the trending OS to know. And if you don't have much experience in this realm, Ubuntu is a good place to start. Step four, learn the network lingo. Grace Hopper has covered a little bit about networking and how it works. Um, but to be a true master, you must be fluent in IPv4, IPv6, port, router switchers, um, switches, DHCP, just to name a few. Step five, understand security concepts and technology. This is another area that's loaded with terminologies like PKI, SSL, IDS, firewalls. Um, understanding them and how they work will give you the ability to work your magic. Step six, think outside the box. Note, this one takes time, patience, persistence, and determination. Try banging your head against the wall a bit. The answer will come to you eventually. So let's practice a bit. This is a very e easy exercise that acts as our hello world of hacking. Let's find um, IP addresses and trace them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my terminal. We're going to talk about two basic commands to know. The first one is ping. Ping is a network diagnostic tool. And what it does is it sends a, hello, are you there? And it's listening for a, 
yes, here I am. So let's ping Google. We say, hello, Google, are you there? And Google says, here I am, here I am, here I am, here I am. Um, this is cool and all, but what we really want is this guy right up here. This is the IP address for Google. So the um, second command that we're going to use is the who is command. This is pretty self-explanatory. It just gives us the, oh, whoops. I, for, I lost my IP address. It gives us information concerning that IP address. Uh, oh. I promise I'm a computer whiz sometimes. <laughs> Let's get our IP address. And gives us information, but the golden nugget here is, look, we found the address for Google. Cool. Um, let's say we don't have a uh, website to hit. Maybe um, you have um, an email from someone that you don't know. Well, Gmail, you can look into the header of the email. And here's our header. This is the received property of that header. And within these brackets, you should find an IP address. Oh, but here we are. We are baffled because what Gmail has done is they proactively said, I know that you guys are going to try and trace IP addresses. So anyone who sends with a Gmail account will have their IP address encrypted. Ah, OK. Well, let's try looking at this email from Cybrary. Cybrary.it. Here's my shameless plug. This is how you can learn how to be a hacker for free. They have that received property in their header, but also the IP address within these brackets. You can use the who is command in your terminal. You can also use some of these um, websites. This is a really cool one, IP Tracker Online. It gives you a visual representation of where um, that IP address. See, it gives us the visual representation of where we are right now. That's our IP address. Let's put this one in here and see where Cybrary is sending from. Ah, Atlanta, Georgia. Interesting. <laughs> okay, let's go back. All right, so congratulations. You are officially a hacker, kind of. Um, but, that, but what's the point of all of this? And what are those other reasons for why I should be a hacker? Well, think about it. If it's this simple for us to track someone down through an IP address, think of how simple it would be for someone else to do it too. And if this is something that novices like us can do, think of what experienced hackers can do. This is why having the hacker mindset in the field of cybersecurity is so important. Cybersecurity is preventing or managing threats like these. So a hacker might create a threat to integrity by modifying user data, memory, or messages in transit. But we can adopt that hacker mindset and manage this threat um, through the use of cryptographic checksums, for example. A hacker might create a threat to confidentiality by stealing information or eavesdropping on the net to learn info about network configurations, for example. But putting on our hacker hat, we can manage this through encryption and web proxies. A hacker might initiate a denial of service by damaging your site so that a client cannot access it, such as flooding the machine with bogus threats, filling up disk or memory, or polluting um, interest traffic to a site in order to shut it down. And quite frankly, this is a hard one to manage even with that hacker mindset. An authentication threat is one where a hacker impersonates a legitimate user or one that takes part in data forgery. And you guessed it, cryptographic techniques are the main practices in managing this um, threat. So security threats are growing, and we're at a point where we can't ignore it or be naive about it. Um, this is a quote I found uh, by Adam Vincent. The threat is advancing quicker than we can keep up with it. The threat changes faster than idea of the risk. 
it's no longer possible to write a large white paper about the risk to a particular system. You would be rewriting the white paper constantly. And that's why it's so important to adopt a, a hacker mindset. Even if you don't go on to become a white hat hacker, the minimum I hope you take away from this is that we need to think like a black hat cracker to manage these security threats, to protect your clients, and to build trust with clients. Because cybersecurity is not just about protecting a password, it's protecting people. Here are some resources for you to start practicing your hacker skills. Good luck on your journey, and thank you for listening to my talk. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you laughed at the